three all-new powertrains are pumping in some much-needed blood into Infiniti's best-selling Q50 sports sedan. This week I'm testing the most potent offering yet. Let's take an in-depth look at the 2016 Q50 Red Sport 400. Taking a look back, if you guys remember the Infiniti G, that was the model that was widely responsible for saving Infiniti as a brand. It instantly established them as the Japanese BMW within the sports sedan uh, realm, and it really helped push Infiniti to new sales goals and really brought a new level of buyers to the brand. Now, if you guys remember, Infiniti replaced the beloved G name in 2014 with the Q50. Now, the Q50 was basically a third generation G, but Infiniti just decided to rename the car under the company's new uh, naming nomenclature. Now, the Q50 was definitely met with a lot of lukewarm responses. When I showed you guys the 2015 model last year, I wasn't completely thrilled with it. Infinity dulled out a lot of the visceral character that the original G was known for and replaced it with a lot of um, quietness, a lot of sports sedan or luxury sports sedan themes that wouldn't be out of place in the older Lexus products. Now, fast forward a couple of years and Infinity is giving the Q50 an all new heart. Three all new hearts to be exact. The company is replacing their beloved VQ Series 37 motor that's been in production for years with an all new, with two all new powertrains, um, a turbocharged two liter four cylinder and two versions of the three liter twin turbo V6 that has the same engine family de designation as the beloved GTR. Now, when you look at the design of the Q50, Infiniti hasn't really changed the look of the car for 2016. It didn't really need it. This is one of the better looking uh, luxury sports sedans on the market. You still have these very, very attractive standard LED headlights with LED fog lights, the same signature Infiniti grill. Now, you can see with the red sport model that I'm particularly showing you, this is the hierarchy in the lineup. It gives you a more aggressive front fascia with a sport bumper, upgraded sport brake, with uh, four piston calipers up front, two, pi two pistons in the back with enlarged rotors. And out back, you have your own unique set of Red Sport uh, rolled dual-tipped chrome exhaust, which do give the Q50 a very stealthy, um, very... Uh, minimalistic look. In fact, it's almost too restrained for my taste. I kind of wish Infinity had given this car more of an aggressive look to let you know that this is the fast model. Now, some of you may prefer that. Some of you may like the very restrained sleeper look of this car, but I kind of wish there was more badging on the car besides the 3 liter TS badges that are, you find on the fender and on the trunk lid. Now, you can see that the size of the Q50 didn't really change much from the previous uh, G. It still stretched, has a 112 inch wheelbase on the longer side for the class 189 inch overall length it is bigger than most of the uh, German luxury sands like the Audi A4 the BMW 3 series and the Mercedes-Benz C-Class now overall I think this car is still a good-looking car on the outside and you can definitely um, take your pick between several different models uh, starting at the base 2 liter turbo uh, there's a 3 liter T uh, premium and sport package and then of course at the top sits this red sport 400 and you can take your pick between rear or all-wheel drive. But anyways, enough about the beautiful looking exterior. Let's take a look at the inside and see if Infiniti has made any changes for 2016. Now, first approaching your Q50, you'll be glad to know that most models will come standard with Infiniti's um, remote start system and then the push button start with intelligent key is standard. I kind of wish Infiniti would go ahead and replace this key. It's definitely an older key fob, but to activate the remote start, you have to just push the lock button and then push and hold this button. and the vehicle starts right up for you. Now, um, as I said, with Intelligent Access Key, all you have to do is put your hand on the back part of the door handle, and it senses the key, and it will unlock the door for you. Now, 
Looking at the interior, you can see the interior design hasn't really changed from the 2014 Q50, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's definitely a very solid interior, uh, decent materials, good size, good feel, good sight lines. These optional sport seats come on the sport models and the red sport model. It does have a manual thigh extender. It has thicker bolstering. They're very comfortable. I find the seats to be very, very uh, good for my frame. Now, stepping inside the Q50, of course, it has a lower step in height going with that sports sedan theme. Uh, and shutting the door, it has a very nice solid thunk, so that adds to the level of quality that you kind of expect with a vehicle in this class. Now to get it out of remote start mode, the key needs to be in the vehicle. You need to push the button to turn on all the electronics. You can see a power tilt telescoping steering wheel is standard. It has two position uh, memory seats and most of the controls in here certainly look high tech um, at a glance. I really like the gauges with that violet ring and the white um, coloring in the background. I, I, I think the screen here, the center stack screen, is a little bit on the small side. A lot of competitors, specifically the Audi A4, offers a virtual cockpit LED screen. I kind of wish Infinity would offer something like that. Looking at the center stack here, you can see there are two screens here. There's is part of Infinity's in-touch controller system. Uh, you have a, they're both touch screens first of all, but one, the two screens don't really look like they go together. One has a glossy finish, one has a regular finish to it. Um, I kind of wish Infinity would just merge them together to make them one large screen, um, but the touch response is decent. Now the materials in here are also decent. You have soft touch dashboard materials on the upper uh, and the lower panel here. Um, the door panels here are also soft touch. This is real aluminum trim according to Infinity. You can also get wood if you'd like. Uh, there's more stitched leather uh, right here on the armrest, and I love the fact that all four windows are one touch up down. Uh, that's a nice feature that Infinity gave you. Now. Um, Looking at the steering wheel here, the steering wheel also is nicely bolstered. It has really nice soft feeling leather. I love the magne magnesium leather wrapped paddle shifters that are mounted to the column so they don't turn with the wheel. I kind of wish the Red Sport model had a flat bottom wheel just going with this, you know, top of the sports sedan theme here that Infinity offers with this model. Now, coming back to the center stack here, I have mixed feelings about the in-touch uh, command system. Uh, there is a knob here that controls the upper screen, which always shows your navigation function. You can turn the screen off if you'd like. When you put the vehicle into reverse, it also shows you your backup camera, which has trajectory uh, and distance markers. No parking sensors. This particular model does not have that option for it. Now, um, looking at the lower screen here, uh, first of all, I want to point out that both of these screens will get washed out in bright sunlight. I kind of wish they were more deeply recessed into the dash. Um, the lower screen here has decent touch response. It also has um, uh, some haptic feedback when you do touch it. Uh, and overall, I think the response could be a little bit faster and the buttons are a little on the small side. The screen, in fact, is a little bit on the small side, especially compared to you know some of the larger wide screens that its competitors definitely offer you. Now, going to the audio sources here, you can see you have your usual sources of audio, FM, satellite radio, AM, DIS, iPod, Bluetooth streaming. Uh, there is no um, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in this car. That's something Infinity doesn't offer just yet, so hopefully they'll do that in the coming years. You can see there's even a driving performance app here that shows your fuel cons consumption, your G meter, your fuel flow, and then your fuel economy information. Um, Mostly I just find this to be more of a gimmick just to kind of impress your passengers, but um, the nav system here, I, I definitely think it could use an upgrade. It's just the traditional bird's eye view that Infinity has been using for years. It's starting to look a little bit childish, a little bit too much like a regular car, and it doesn't really stand out as a luxury brand. It's too similar to what I see in, Infi in Nissan products, so I would like to see Infinity offer something a little bit nice. I mean, the, the resolution here is definitely updated. It's not as coarse and grainy, but I do wish it had something a little bit more impressive can just going with the fact that this is a luxury brand now uh, you do have heated seats down here it's part of a premium plus package cooled seats strangely are not available on this card its competitors definitely um, offer that as well there's a 14 speaker Bose studio on wheels surround sound audio system it sounds pretty good not as good as the Burmester or the Bang & Olufsen you'll find on some of its German competitors now a seven-speed automatic is the only transmission available right now there is no more manual transmission still even on this top uh, red sport model it does have a manual shift mode and the paddles as I said and then of course down here you can choose between your driver selectable modes uh, there is a sport plus uh, a personal which you can adjust the steering the suspension the um, 
um, throttle all to your liking. There's a standard mode, which is always defaults to, an eco mode for those of you who want to drive green, and then of course a snow mode when you guys are in bad weather. Now overall, uh, I think the interior certainly looks nice at a glance. The technology uh, infotainment system could use some work. I kind of wish Infinity would just go with the route that the Germans have gone, to be honest, or give us a much larger screen as opposed to these two smaller screens. Uh, and the seats, as I said, are very comfortable. There is a standard sunroof here. There's no big pano sunroof available like on some of its competitors. Uh, the glove compartment, it's a decent size. It's lined with felt. It's damped. Uh, and then the armrest here doesn't slide or adjust, but it is nicely padded. You have dual cup holders right here with some more uh, aluminum trim and then decent storage here for the uh, center console uh, as well. Now looking at the back seat of the Q50, you can see it has decent room. This has one of the longer wheelbases in the class at 112 uh, inches and it definitely shows in the back seat. Stepping back here you can see, you know, this is still a compact sports stand by its size and the floor, the, the, the foot space is not bad. I do have very good foot space underneath the front seats. There is a large hump here to show you this is a rear drive biased model. I like the fact that there are vents back here and dual map pockets as well and shutting the door uh, it has a very nice solid thunk as well it's all the same materials from the front seat automatic windows no heated rear seats surprisingly uh, I'm not sure if that's an option I don't think it is um, you do have a nice armrest right here uh, with some more with some cup holders a uh, little bit of storage there is a pass-through right here and the seats themselves they do actually fold down uh, 60 40 so infinity did give you some nice versatility uh, in the cargo area now looking at the trunk capacity of the Q50, you can see it's a pretty good size. Now uh, it measures about 13.2 cubic feet of space. If you guys go for that hybrid model, I think it drops it to like 9.4, that's a different review. But the space is definitely very usable. Uh, underneath the floor here, you don't have a temporary spare because this car has run flat tires. Um, so instead you just have a fix a flat kit or a, an air compressor if you guys need to use that. And overall, I think the trunk capacity is decent, definitely uh, in the norm for this class. hood of the 2016 Q50. This is the whole reason why I'm showing you guys another review of this car. This is an all-new motor for 2016. This is the top dog in the lineup. The 3-liter twin-turbo V6. It's part of the new VR30 DDTT engine family. The same engine family as the Nissan GTR. Now, despite that, this engine is basically 85% new. It has direct injection, which is the GTR motor never had. Um, and it has variable uh, displacement turbos to eliminate lag, which are, which are mounted directly to uh, the exhaust manifold so it does limit that um, exhaust travel so it does help reduce the lag. Now the numbers are pretty impressive. In fact they actually top the class in this in this sports sedan segment. 400 horsepower in the Red Sport 400 and 350 pound-feet of torque. Uh, now that basically matches the, the current output of the new 2017 Lincoln MKZ. It surpasses the output of the upcoming Audi S4, the Mercedes C450, and the BMW 340i. Now it all runs through either rear drive or all-wheel drive, like my tester, through a seven-speed automatic transmission. Now fuel economy is also improved versus you know the previous 3.7. This is rated at 1926 if you guys get this all-wheel drive model, which is not bad on premium gas, of course. Now um, this car weighs about 4,000 pounds. Uh, let's get it out on the road and see how it all works together, shall we? So last year when I showed you guys the 2015 Q50, it was one of the most requested luxury sedans I ever got. Um, needless to say, I was pretty disappointed in the vehicle. I said it was probably the worst Japanese entry on the market. Now, with this all new engine, 400 horsepower, um, I'm pretty excited to get my hands on this new Red Sport model. So let's see if uh, all these changes that Infinity made to the engine were well worth the wait. Holy shit. Oh. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Easy there for a second. Wow. You know, 
A lot of you have definitely asked if this new VR motor sounds any different versus the uh, VQ and... <laughs> oh my god! Holy crap! This thing sounds really good. In fact, it has that traditional Nissan Infiniti whale when you get on it. In fact, you know, I, I've heard the, um, the VQ motor so many times, this basically just sounds like an evolution of it. It's much smoother, it's more refined, it has a pretty nice noise. Now, one thing I am hearing a lot of, especially when I put it into Sport Sharp, is the enhanced um, intake induction growl. Infiniti's amplifying the noise through the speakers, which, you know, it's a fake sound, but it does sound good, so I'm not gonna knock it too much on it being a fake sound. But I have to say, the, the power is there. This thing has torque, torque for days, torque everywhere. Uh, and uh, I need to experience that acceleration a couple more times. Oh my god! God damn, that's fast! Oh! <laughs> wow, they really outdid themselves with this new uh, twin turbo V6. Now this car just went on sale a few months ago and zero to 60 times I've seen as quick as four and a half seconds. <laughs> and this car feels every bit as fast as four and a half seconds. It's basically a full second quicker to 60 than the old VQ 37HR motor, motor. And it sounds better, it's more refined, it gets better gas mileage. The shifts from the seven speed auto surprisingly are very good. I wish that they were a little quicker at times but when it's in sport sharp mode, you know, you put your foot down, it's quick to drop a gear, um, and it, it shifts very smoothly when you are driving it normally. So in terms of the transmission, you know, Infinity's made constant updates to their seven-speed auto. Do I wish it was a dual clutch? Yes and no. Do I wish there was a manual? Yes, I wish there was still a manual. Do I wish it had, you know, those crackly fart noises that a Mercedes C450 makes when you shift? Yes. So there are certain aspects of the Q50 that I do think need improvement. The biggest improvement I think this car needs is the steering. Now, uh, this model that I'm driving does not have the direct adaptive drive, the steer-by-wire technology. Um, it does have just the traditional electric power steering assist system that Infiniti has tweaked. Um, and you know, in sports sharp mode, the steering is quick enough, but I hate to report the fact that it's completely devoid of feel. I have no idea what the front tires are doing. In fact, there are times where I was going around these corners on, on these back roads here, and I had trouble deciphering, you know, if the front wheels had grip or not, you know. The only time I really noticed if they were lacking on grip was when I went around a corner too fast and it started to understeer and the stability control would kick in and grab the rear end or whatnot or the front end from basically keeping me from getting into an accident. But um, I do wish that the car had the entire package. It's got the ballsy motor to ba to basically make sure you can smoke that pesky little BMW 335i at the, at the next light. However, it doesn't have the chassis dynamics of the current C-Class. Um, or, you know, even the Lexus IS, you know, the Lexus IS, all the Japanese competitors basically have fallen behind now that this new, you know, Q50 Red Sport is out, but the Lexus still has the best handling, which is surprising to me. Lexus in the past has always been the more docile, the very, very um, devoid of feel, numb car, and the Infiniti still has a little bit of that numbness. The visceral feel in terms of the handling is not here from the previous generation G, and that's something that I still completely miss. Now, in terms of a luxury sedan, how does the Q50 feel? Um, I'm sad to report that it's not as quiet as you know, some of its German competitors. There's still a good amount of um, road noise that comes in. You hear a little bit. You, the glass sounds like it's not quite as thick uh, as its competitors, so you do hear a little bit more noise. Um, which is a little bit sad to say, but the Q50 is at a lower price point versus, you know, some of its competitors. The ride quality, however, is pretty good. This is the adjustable damping sport suspension, and even in its stiffest setting, uh, the ride's very compliant. Um, it doesn't have, you know, an air suspension available like some competitors, but Infiniti's tuned the ride to be good. I'm not sure it'd be great for track duty, but this is really good for, you know, everyday driving. Never get sick of that power. Whoo! That that is just in 
intoxicating power. This thing is so much faster than the Lexus IS or the Acura TLX. This is basically C450 quick at a much lower price point, and that's what I really love about the Q50. It's returned to that infinity um, trademark of offering loads of power for less money than its competition, and Infinity is claiming that spot again with this all-new 3-liter twin-turbo V6. Now, going down the road here, driving it normally, um, the visibility in here is very good, very big side mirrors. It just feels right. I like the way the Q50 feels in terms of size. I have really good sight lines through the front, through the back, through the side windows here. This, my tester is missing the driver assistance package, so it doesn't have any blind spot, doesn't have any cross driver alert. It just is a backup camera, and honestly, it's a really easy car to drive. Um, as a daily driver on long highway jaunts, you're gonna basically love driving this car. It's got really supportive, comfortable seats. It's relatively quiet, aside from that stupid amplifying noise that the uh, speakers do with the intake induction noise. But, you know, overall, <clears throat> there are certain elements of this cabin that I wish Infinity had updated. For example, this is the Red Sport 400 model. There's not a touch of red in this cabin. It would be nice if the gauges, you know, glowed red, if there was some red stitching, a flat bottom wheel, something to basically let you know that you have the special model. That is all furiously absent in this Q50 Red Sport, which is sad because the interior definitely feels like it's on par with its Japanese rivals, but the Mercedes the Mercedes has definitely raised the bar. Audi has raised the bar with technology with their new virtual cockpit display. So the Infiniti definitely is not perfect, but if you guys are looking for that ballsy motor, the Q50 delivers, and it delivers it at a very good price point. One thing I really appreciate about the Q50 is definitely the paddle shifters. I like that they're mounted to the column. They also have automatic rev matching. They are a little slow to shift though, surprisingly. I, I pulled the paddle there and it didn't actually shift until it finally hit the red line and it started bouncing off that. So that was a little disappointing, but I do like the downshift rev matching. Again, this is not a dual clutch. It won't fool you into a dual clutch, but it's a very good automatic, not as good as the you know eight speeds that I've experienced in some of its competitors, but it's definitely quick, th quick up there in quickness and in smoothness for sure. Now with the going theme of luxury sedans, um, there is a plethora of driver assistance tech available. My tester, unfortunately, is missing all of it, but I have experienced it in other Infinity products. You can basically take your pick uh, of adaptive cruise control, forward, predictive forward collision warning. The Q50 is one of those few cars which will predict two car lengths ahead of you um, if there's going to be any trouble. Uh, and that's something that Infiniti is kind of working towards. It's one of the reasons why they offer their direct adaptive steer technology, which is the steer by wire. It's kind of like a stepping stone toward autonomous driving. And that's where the Q50 feels a little anonymous. You know, um, as a sports sedan, this car doesn't really excel completely. The steering is completely lifeless. Um, and at, at a track, I imagine this car wouldn't be the best, but on the roads, regular roads, you're going to basically be jumping for joy every time you hit the accelerator. As a luxury car, the car, the cabin is quiet enough. The seats are supportive, but the interior just doesn't feel special. There are definitely times where I felt like I was driving a, a, a really nice Nissan Altima or Nissan Maxima, which, by the way, I've driven the new Maxima, the new Altima. The Infiniti definitely has a one-up in terms of its engine. Now, the new Maxima's interior is pretty nice. I wouldn't really say that it's nicer than this uh, than this Infiniti. They're pretty much on par, which is where I have my issue. This is an Infiniti. It should feel even nicer. So I really think Infiniti needs to spend a little bit more R&D money to develop an interior that just completely differentiates it from its more plebeian Nissan stablemates. But anyways, we're coming up to the conclusion of this review, and let's talk about a couple of numbers here really quick. The gas mileage is an issue, is something I'd like to touch base on really quickly. The Q50 definitely has improved fuel economy with this new engine. Uh, the four-cylinder two-liter model can get up to, I think, 33 miles to the gallon, which is a huge improvement over the old one. That's a different review. Uh, this Q Red Sport 400 is EPA rated at 1926. Uh, and my, in my you know testing, I've been averaging about 18 and a half. Now that's with pretty aggressive driving. I've gotten it as good as about 23, 24 miles per gallon, which is pretty good considering how fast this car is. And if I was probably a little bit easier on the gas, I drove it more in eco mode. Uh, as opposed to being in Sport Plus all the time. I imagine it being able to do a little bit better than that, especially since with this seven speed, the engine does drop the revs pretty well uh, when you're cruising down the 
highway, but the Q50 is lacking a couple of things. There's no automatic start-stop technology on this car, uh, like most of its German competitors. That, I imagine, could save a pretty good amount of gas, um, especially in city. That could really bump the city mileage a little bit more if you guys decided to go with that route. Now, regarding the price, uh, the Q50 was definitely always more expensive than the G. Uh, surprisingly, for 2016, this car is cheaper. Uh, it starts at around $33,000. Now, that is downgrading from, you know, a 328 horsepower V6 to a 2 liter turbo, which has significantly less power. Um, the old Q50, the 15 model, I think started at like 37. Uh, the the 3.0T with the 300 horsepower output, that's now rated, that's starting at around 39. So it is about a $2,000 price increase over the old you know 3.7 model which is reasonable it has you know less horsepower but more torque and it gets better gas miles now this red sport model is a different breed it's an it's basically a sub performance model before like the the high-end m or the amg the full-fledged amg or m model basically now this car starts at 47.9 which is still a bargain considering it has the most horsepower in the class or it basically matches that lincoln mkz but let's be honest who really cross shops a lincoln uh, in this class of vehicle uh, this all-wheel drive model all-wheel drive by the way adds about two thousand dollars starts at just a shade under fifty thousand dollars about 49.9 that still represents a really great value it is more expensive than most of its japanese competitors but it has more horsepower and performance than those models and it is about two $2,500 cheaper than a Mercedes C450 AMG. Uh, the new Audi S4 is not out yet. It starts right in line with a BMW 340i as well. Now, my tester only has the premium plus package for about another $2,200. It adds nav. Uh, it adds a heated steering wheel, heated seats. Uh, it also has a bunch of other accessories on it, um, like the, the carpeted premium floor mats, all-weather floor mats, uh, the illuminated side sill doors and stuff like that. My tester stickers for about $55,000, just over $55,000. Which, you know, is sounds like a lot of money for an Infiniti. It's, it is reaching up there, but I really think the company is offering the kind of acceleration performance. I just think that if they really tuned the chassis a little bit more, give it a more of a... Um, an aggressive look on the outside, especially for this special Red Sport model, I think it definitely could be one of the tops in the class. Until then, there are still a couple of, you know, negatives with this car that I, I have a hard time overlooking. But again, it offers a lot of value for uh, the performance dollar, which is something that Infiniti has always been really, really good at. Now, speaking of which, if you guys do want to equip your Q50 with all of the driver assistance tech, this, tech, this car can touch $60,000, which is still about $5,000 less than a fully loaded Mercedes C450 AMG, which can easily hit almost 70 grand when you guys get all the options. So, um, in the world of fast compact sports sedans the q50 definitely is in a class of its own when it comes to the money factor but anyways i hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview of this 2016 infinity q50 red sport 400 all-wheel drive there's a freaking name full if you're in the market for a luxury sports sedan like this and want the most power the bragging rights basically the infinity may be worth a look and if you guys are also looking to see the latest cars i am testing make sure you follow me on instagram like us on facebook and as always make keep subscribed to the redline reviews youtube channel for all the latest reviews thanks so much for watching guys i'll catch you all in the next video